Isaiah chapter number 9, verse number 6, the Bible says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Let's pray. Our Father, oh, we so thank you for being such a great God. Lord, we thank you that we can assemble with your people in spite of some obstacles. Lord, I don't know what others faced. I saw a lot of people shaking their heads when I asked them if they had some obstacles. And Lord, I know the devil do like nothing better than to throw all kinds of snares and pits and traps and uh, all kinds of blockades and everything to keep your people from being able to focus on the goodness of God. But Lord, I'm thankful for that verse that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And even though we faced obstacles, God, you've helped us prevail. It's good to be here today. Lord, I'm thankful for the good singing. I'm thankful for the good fellowship, the good Sunday school hour. God, I'm thankful for the blessings of the day. And Lord, I pray for the next few minutes you'd help your people. Lord, I just sense a, uh, just a need of your touch and your presence in your people's lives. Lord, we all face uh, uh, things in this life, and sometimes it's good to just come into the house of God and be reminded how great you really are. And so I pray for the next few minutes you'd edify and encourage your people. And I certainly pray if there's any in our midst unsaved that today would be the day of their salvation. Lord, we do pray for Seth. You touch him. Oh, what a battle he's been going through, and I pray for him today. I do pray for Miss Janet, who is sick as well. I pray for this 16-month-old baby by the name of Caroline. You'd be with her and her family. I'm certain her parents are uh, certainly upset, and I pray for that situation. I do pray for uh, little Jackson's hand back there. You'd touch him. Lord, I pray for uh, the Wimpy family. You'd comfort them. I pray for uh, the Jacksons, and I pray for uh, 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 the Smiths who are traveling. You'd give them traveling mercies. Uh, and then, Father, we pray for the sick and afflicted. You'd touch them. Those that would desire to be here and couldn't be here today, you'd help them. But, Lord, those of us that are assembled here this morning, I pray that you'd show yourself great, and we'll thank you for that. Use this unworthy vessel. Lord, we'll bless you and praise you for all you do, for it's in the holy and wonderful name of Jesus we do pray. Amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to just uh, three things as a way of introduction about this verse. Uh, I want you to notice, first of all, the promises uh, made, or the promise made. Uh, we find in verse number 6, it said, For unto us uh, a child is born, uh, and unto us uh, a son is given. Uh, can I say you that Isaiah had no idea that when the Holy Ghost of God inspired him to pin this verse down, uh, that he would be prophesying uh, a, a promise uh, that one day uh, God was going to send his son uh, through the form of a child uh, into this world. There was a promise made. Uh, uh, can I say secondly, I want you to notice uh, there's the promise kept. Uh, we find also in this verse uh, that he was uh, uh, not only prophesied that he would come, he did come. Uh, and we find that when he did show up, uh, the Bible said that his name uh, would be called Wonderful uh, Counselor, uh, the Mighty God, uh, the Everlasting Father, uh, the Prince of Peace. Uh, when Isaiah promised this, uh, he had no idea uh, just a few hundred la years later uh, in a town called Bethlehem, uh, the Son of God uh, would be born to a virgin maid uh, uh, in a stable, uh, and he would come forth out of that stable uh, some 30 years later uh, uh, doing good, uh, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, uh, uh, healing the sick, raising the dead, touching the blind eyes, making them open, uh, uh, and setting forth uh, uh, the uh, avenues that go to the cross, uh, pay for the sins of the world, uh, establish his church, uh, and friends, you and I would be the benefit of it today. Uh, God kept this promise that Isaiah prophesied in this verse. Uh, but can I say in this verse we find there's yet a promise to be fulfilled. There's a promise that has not been fulfilled. In the middle of that verse, it says, uh, And the government shall be upon his shoulder. 
Verse number 7 says, uh, Of the increase of his government uh, and peace there shall be no end uh, upon the throne of David and upon the kingdom uh, to order it and to establish it uh, with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. Uh, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. That promise has yet to be kept. Brother Doug, you know this. This is why the Jews crucified him. They was looking for Messiah to come, to sit on the throne of David, to, to rule the world. They wasn't looking for Christ. Brother Brian, there's just as many prophecies about Christ coming as the babe in the manger uh, uh, to go to the cross and die for the sins of man. Uh, 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 just as many prophecies about that. But to counsel the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees, they only saw the prophecies dealing with him as the ruler of the world, the Messiah. They didn't see the prophecies about the Savior of the world. Can I say, he is going to rule the world with a rod of iron. And when he comes back, friend, he's not coming back as the lowly uh, uh, Jesus, the servant of man. Uh, he's not coming back as a babe in a manger. Uh, he's not coming back as the broken shell on the cross. Uh, he's coming back as Lord of lords uh, and King of kings. Uh, hey, uh, there's coming a day when all the world's going to see him in his glory uh, and sinful man's going to cry for the rocks to fall upon them. Uh, 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 can I say there's coming a day uh, when all will see who he really is uh, well I got to read this verse I got to think about this I got to think about where it just started saying he'll be called wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting father the prince of peace and that's exactly what I'm going to preach on brother James that's him that's him can I say that verse just describes him you say who is Jesus that's him uh, what's he all about? That's him right there. Uh, what's he look like? That's him. Uh, hey, uh, uh, if there's one verse uh, that guy can pull out all the Bible uh, to just give you the attributes of him, that's him right there. Uh, he's proven it in my life for 45 years. Uh, he's wonderful, counselor, uh, everlasting father, uh, prince of peace. That's him, my dear friends. Uh, can I say, first of all, he's our advocate. You say, tell me about him. Oh, I will. He's our advocate. We find in that verse, it says the government shall be upon his shoulder. He's our advocate. I don't need to go to anybody else to handle my problems. Uh, he's well able to take care of me. Uh, he is my advocate. Uh, when all the imps of hell would come against me, uh, he's the one that stands up. Uh, he stands up for me. Uh, he's my advocate. Uh, when the devil himself, the accuser of the brother, uh, uh, wants to come against me uh, and accuse me, uh, my advocate stands up uh, and he says, Father, he's in grace in the palm of my hand uh, he's robed in my righteousness uh, my blood's been applied uh, and the father says uh, not guilty uh, he's justified uh, as if he'd never been a sinner uh, that's him uh, he's my advocate uh, he stands up for us uh, can I say not only that uh, he supports us the government shall be upon his shoulder uh, I'm glad when I can't stand, uh, he supports me. Uh, I'm glad when I can't go on, uh, he supports me and holds me up. Uh, I'm glad when it seems like there is no hope, uh, he walks in uh, and takes over uh, and holds me up. Uh, oh, he supports me. He stands up for me. He secures me. Huh? Bernie's wanting the government to take care of everybody. Good luck with that, Bernie. But I got one who's got a heavenly government. And for 45 years, uh, he's been taking care of me. Uh, he secures me. Uh, I don't have to worry about tomorrow. Uh, he's already secured it. Uh, I don't have to worry when it's my time to cross over. Uh, it's already secured. Uh, I'm glad my hope uh, and my faith uh, and my trust uh, isn't in baptismal waters. Uh, isn't in the Baptist faith. Uh, 
isn't in some preacher. Uh, hey, I'm in him, uh, and he's in me, uh, and I'm secured uh, forevermore. Hallelujah. He's my advocate. Uh, that's him. Uh, do you know him today? Uh, is he your advocate? Uh, if not, I highly recommend him. Uh, he's never lost a case. Uh, he's never lost anything. Uh, he is altogether lovely. Oh, uh, can I say? He's my advocate. But can I say this? He's astonishing. The Bible says, The government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. You say, what does that mean? That means he's astonishing. That means you can't apply enough attributes to him. His ways are past finding out. Hey, he's wonderful. There's nobody that speaks like him. There's nobody that looks like him. His hair's white as wool. His eyes are as flames of fire. His face or his countenance is as brass. Uh, his voice is like many thunderings. Uh, hey, we can't even look upon him uh, until we get a glorified body. Uh, we just melt in his presence. Uh, he's just wonderful. Uh, He's the most beautiful sight in heaven. Uh, his glory will light the whole thing. Uh, he's wonderful. He's astonishing. Uh, his looks are astonishing. Uh, his ways are astonishing. Uh, only he uh, would take himself and go to the cross uh, and die for our sins uh, and look to an old little Gentile dog uh, living down here on Boots Lane uh, when nobody else cared about you and your family. Uh, and he said, I love that boy. Uh, and I'm going to have Vince Powell pick him up and bring him to church uh, where you hear the gospel uh, and you heard the gospel uh, and you believed uh, and he saved you. And now you get to go to heaven. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, only he could do that for you. Oh, what a savior. And he not only loved Clint, he loved all of us. Doesn't matter where you are. Uh, doesn't matter what you've done. Uh, doesn't matter uh, what you're guilty of. Uh, he paid for it. Uh, and he'll change your life. Uh, that's astonishing. Oh, it's astonishing that he'd even let us have his book that we could read about him. It's astonishing that he'd even let us know his name that we could speak about him. It's astonishing uh, that he'd even let our little pea brains uh, be able to comprehend how great he is. Uh, but all oh, can I say, uh, he's wonderful today. That Shunammite lady describing Solomon, which is a picture of what the bride describes Christ, says, he's altogether lovely. Said there's no fault in him. Even Pilate, when he tried him, said, I find no fault in him. Oh, he's wonderful. He's the advocate. He's astonishing. I mean, he flung all the stars out there and called them by name. We only know a couple of their names. Can't keep up with them. He knows them all. Do you realize he took nothing and made everything? He's astonishing. Huh? Nobody like him. He's wonderful. Wonderful. Brother Jack, he's so wonderful. When you got cancer, he didn't say, well, that's it for him. He said, I just think I'll go with him. He said, I just think I'll touch him. I just think I like seeing him get happy every now and then sitting in church. So I'll just let him hang around for a while. Huh? He's just wonderful. Astonishing. Huh? Brother Doug, just a nobody, farm boy, not even able to read. But he saved you. Let you preach his book. Let you go across the world telling people about you. Isn't he wonderful? Oh, what a Savior. Uh, Brother Josh lets you go to the jail and tell them folks in their jail how good he is. Uh, he's wonderful. Uh, Brother Bob, a lost church boy, uh, but he didn't want you to stay lost. Uh, he's wonderful. Uh, they open your eyes. Uh, let you swallow your pride uh, and believe on him. Isn't it wonderful? Uh, then let your family sit on the church pew with you. Uh, I'm talking about he's wonderful. Uh, hey, he's astonishing. Uh, Brother John, the whole time you serve in the military, didn't let you die. So you can come over here and sit on church pew and hear how wonderful he is. Uh, he's just wonderful, I'm telling you. Oh, he's the advocate. He's astonishing. 
Can I say he's the advisor? So his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Huh? Can I say the wonderful thing about this book? It'll tell you how to get to heaven. But it'll tell you what to fix every ill in your life. Huh? He knows how to advise us. He knows how to tell us when we're doing good and we're not doing so good. He knows how to tell us how to get around the next bend in the road. He teaches us how to stand, how to sit, how to speak up, how to be silent. Uh, I mean, he's just the counselor. Uh, he knows. He was touched with the feeling of our infirmities, uh, yet he was out seeing. Uh, uh, but he knows what you're going through. Uh, he knows what you feel. Uh, he knows what you're facing. Uh, and he's got a word for you. Uh, hey, and it doesn't cost you anything. Uh, and you don't have to lay on the couch. Uh, you just got to look to him and ask for help. Uh, and he'll help you. He's the advisor. He's astonishing. He's the advocate. Do you know him? Well, I'm talking about him. Do you know him? Say, so, well, I, I know a preacher. Well, I know a bunch of preachers of them. Some of them aren't worth shooting. Do you know him? Huh? Well, I know this, and I know this. Wonderful. But do you know him? Can I say this about him? He's almighty. Look what it says. His name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor. The mighty God. Didn't say a mighty God. Said the mighty God. He is almighty. Huh? He has all power. There's nothing that he cannot do. There's nothing impossible for him. Well, the revelator wrote in Revelation 9, 6, uh, and I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude. I say, hallelujah, I'm going to be one of them. Huh? Oh, I'll be there. <laughs> hallelujah, praise unto God. Uh, he said, I heard the voice of a great multitude uh, as the voice of many waters, uh, as it were, the voice of mighty thundering, saying, hallelujah, for the Lord God, omnipotent, all-powerful, reigneth. Uh, that's him. He's the almighty God. He's all powerful. Uh, only he can take a drunk, uh, save him, uh, and make him drink from a different well. Uh, only he can take a drug addict, uh, save him, uh, and get him high on the Holy Ghost. Uh, only he uh, can take a sinner uh, and change him. Uh, and he starts singing praise unto God. Uh, he's almighty. Uh, there's nothing too hard for him. Hallelujah. Do you know him? Oh, he's the Almighty. Uh, Y'all know Brother Sidney Weaver, Sidney, Superman. I love Brother Sidney. I've heard most of his messages multiple times. I was with him in Florida. I said, preach something I don't know. He didn't. Uh, I love one illustration. I've heard him use it several times. You know, he's a weaver. He's cocky, full of pride, like most of us. He said he was playing basketball, and there was a guy who'd got out of prison out there on the schoolyard playing with him. And that guy, he, he smacked Sidney and told Sidney he was going to kill him. He said this guy had muscles on top of muscles, and he was everything. He said, but I'm a weaver. He said, that guy may whip me, but if I go home to my daddy, my daddy knows that I let a guy whip me and I didn't stand up for myself. He said, it'd be worse when daddy gets hold of me. See, his daddy was one of them old time policeman uh, didn't really go with the protocols of today uh, you would submit to his authority or he would make you submit to his authority hmm? and brother Sidney calls him one of them old time head busting policemen but Sidney just said uh, he said alright big boy what you got and Sidney said I squared off about it uh, against him he said I got there and he said he may kill me but I'm at least going to hit him once. He said about that time, his old head-busting policeman daddy walked up behind him and tapped him on the shoulder. He says, what's your problem, son? He said, that guy just got out of jail and had muscles all over him. Looked up and saw my daddy. He said, uh, 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 Officer Weaver, I don't have any problem with you. My problem's with him. Uh, he said, well, if you got a problem with him, you got a problem with me because that's my son. Uh, Hey, he said that guy turned tail and left. Uh, I want to tell you, uh, I'm not much, uh, 
but the one who saved me. Uh, he's all powerful. Uh, you got a problem with me. Uh, you're going to have to take it up with him. Uh, God belongs to him. Uh, hey, he's all powerful. Uh, and nothing's able to come against him. Y'all don't tell Sydney I used his illustration now, all right? I thought my Sydney was going to get one yesterday. Oh, my stars. I saw the foster coming out of her. That girl elbowed her. Did you see it? And for the next, I don't know how long she was this close to that girl's face. I told Ned, I said, you can tell that girl didn't have any pride because if she just had one thing, Sid had been on her like flies on you know what. Are you listening? I mean, Sid was all of She was ready to take her out. You say, what'd she do? Oh, I've seen her do it before. You don't want to hear me. What's funny is one of her high school teammates, Maddie, was there. And Maddie said, she don't have me out there to take care of her. See, in high school, she'd get mad, and Maddie'd pour her off side and calm her down. Maddie wasn't out there, and Sydney wasn't getting calm, huh? Anyway, I'm just trying to tell you, I don't have to fight any battles because I serve the Almighty God who does my fighting for me. Can I say this? He's not only Almighty. He's always been. Look what it says. He's wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father. There's a lot of people got misconception that Jesus just began some 2,000 years ago. You watch the History Channel, Discovery Channel, they'll have all kinds of coming up on Easter. They'll have all kinds of special, how he was a great teacher, how he was a great religious man, how he uh, disrupted the world. And all the, and they talk about him like they talk about Buddha or Muhammad or somebody like that. Oh, no, 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 no. He didn't just begin 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago, he took off his glory and put on flesh uh, and came to this world. But he's always been. Uh, he's the everlasting father uh, John tells us that John chapter number one in the beginning was the word word capitalized talking about him uh, and the word uh, was with God uh, and the word uh, was God uh, the same was in the beginning with God how long has he's been ever since there's been uh, he's always been uh, he's been longer than times ever been recorded uh, he's from the alpha to the omega uh, he's the everlasting father uh, 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 verse 3 said all things were made by him uh, he made everything that was made uh, it says uh, and without him was not anything made that was made uh, in him was life uh, and the life was the light of men uh, and the light shineth in darkness uh, and the darkness comprehended it not it means dark couldn't over, darkness couldn't overcome him he's the everlasting father he's always been do you know him huh can I say not only is he all powerful the mighty God not only has he always been, he's omniscient, he knows everything, and he's omnipresent. He's everywhere all the time. My Sunday school class, we was talking about how God keeps a record. You know, God's keeping a record of you right now. He knows what you're thinking. He knows what's in your heart. He knows what you did yesterday. He knows what you're doing today. He'll, know what you, he'll record what you're doing tomorrow, even though he already knows what you're going to do tomorrow. Because he's God. He's always been. That's him. Do you know him? Uh, let me say this. He's amicable. Look what it says. He's the everlasting father, the prince of peace. He's amicable. That means he's calming. He's assuring. You know why I can stand up here and boldly say he's the almighty God? Because he's assured me of that. There's been times in my life and I didn't know which way to go and the counselor would show up. And then the Prince of Peace would come right behind him and assure me that the counselor knows what he's talking about. There's been times when I trusted in him just to find out that he knows what he's talking about. There's been times when I didn't know which way to go and he just gave me peace and then it didn't matter which way to go because uh, I knew he was here uh, and it'd be all right. Uh, hey, he knows how to calm me, uh, knows how to assure me, uh, knows how to let me know everything's going to be okay because he's the Prince of Peace. Uh, it's one thing he told his disciples before he left. He said, my peace I leave with thee. Not peace as the world knoweth, my peace. There's nothing like his peace. His peace will have you face a fiery furnace and not fret about it. His peace will have you take a nap in a lion's den with lions all around and not worry about it. His peace will have you uh, uh, grab the devil by his beard and say, it's okay. Are you listening? There's nothing like his peace. His peace will take you all the way to the valley of death and you'll find there 
is no fear there because his peace is assuring peace. It's calming peace. I worry about folks, Brother Ray, they say they know him, but their nerves are always shot. If they know him, they need to get better acquainted with him because he's the Prince of Peace. Huh? I'm not saying you're going to face things that you're troubled about, but I can tell you this, when you got troubled waters, he's the one that speaks peace to the sea and calms your troubled waters. Huh? He's amicable. He's everything you'll ever need. He's Savior. He's Lord. He's friend. He's the comforter. He's everything you need. Do you know him? Because that's him. That's him. What else do you need other than him? Uh, he provides. Owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Hey, he's the one that's well able to take care of you. I had no idea what Phil was going to sing. The Lord just said, have Phil sing. Huh? You say, you're going to have a guy sing with no music on Sunday morning? Well, I'm going to do whatever God says. Yeah, go. I had no idea he was going to sing a song about a journey and talk about a journey and talk about losing two of his dearest wants. Do you know why he's in church today? Because he knows him. Because huh? he knows he hadn't lost anything. He's gained him and heaven, and they're already there waiting on him. Hmm? Huh? Huh? Because he knows him. You know, I can get up saying because he knows him. Yep. Now, folks can get up and go to work tomorrow when everything's going against because they know him. Yep, sure. Now, folks can face adversity and face pits and face problems and face some of the darkest days of their life and still rise above the occasion because they know him. You know why some of you are always troubled, always worried, always down in the dumps, always walking on you? Because you need to get better acquainted with him. If you get your eyes off your problems, get your eyes on him, you'll find you have no problems. Because he's greater than all those. And he'll help you. Do you know him? Do you know him? That's him. What a Savior. Hmm. Isaiah said he's coming. I can look back, say 2,000 years ago he came. And I can say back in 1974 he came to me. And he changed me. And friend, he'll change you. Do you know him? If you don't, want you come and trust in him today? If you know him, but yet your life has just got some things going, why don't you get better acquainted with him? Maybe you need the counselor to show up today. Maybe you need the Prince of Peace to step in today. Maybe you just need to come and tell him thank you today. Maybe you need to come today and say, oh, you are wonderful today. Oh, I don't know. All I know is for the last few days, all I can think about is him. And today, maybe that's what you need to get your mind on, him. And then again, if you don't know him, we'd love to introduce you to him. There's nobody like him. Nobody. He's been changing lives for 2,000 years. But wait till we get that glorified body. And you see when the change is complete. Oh, and it'll always be about him. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. Folks are coming. They're praying. If you don't know him, once you come, we'll take the Bible and show you how to be saved. Uh, folks are praying. Brother Ray's picking out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you. Lord, there are not words to be able to describe how truly great and wonderful you are. But Lord, we're thankful for the glimpses in the Bible that just kind of spell it out. Lord, thank you for being so wonderful. Thank you for being the counselor. Thank you for being the mighty God, the everlasting priest, uh, prince, uh, the everlasting father, prince of peace. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for being my savior and my Lord. And thank you for being good to me. Lord, there may be some here today that don't know you. I pray the sweet Holy Ghost of God would disturb their soul right now and let them know they don't know you, but you'd sure like to know them. You'd like to have a relationship with them. Help them to come put their faith in you. Lord, those that have been saved, some may be really struggling, can't get their eyes off their problems. Help them to come put their eyes on you. God, just do a work around here that's all about you. Father, we'll thank you for what you're going to do. Lord, we bless you. We praise you and thank you for being all that that verse describes and so much more. Have your will and way now. Speak to hearts. 
for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.